When we're playing lead, we're soloing, maybe we're playing melodies. We're largely playing one note at a time with many notes in sequence. Think about scales, arpeggios, that kind of a thing. Our capability to perform that task is dramatically impacted by how well we can synchronize our picking and fretting hands. And since playing lead is a pretty important part of our journey, focusing on synchronization should be as well. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris. Today you will learn about synchronization. Now as guitar players, when we first start out, we're largely focused with where to put our fingers, right? We're very, very painfully aware of where things are on the fretboard for our fretting hand, right? Where are the dots? What does the chord diagram look like? How do I chase all the ants down with this hand? And we largely leave our picking hand to solve problems by itself which it does. However, unbeknownst to us, we can often incur inefficiencies and not know why and not even know they're there. Here are a couple of examples of that. See if these are familiar to you. Um, you can play scales pretty well. You can play arpeggios or whatever it is, but you can't seem to get as fast as you want to get. There's like this weird sort of speed limit that you can't crack and you don't really know why. Often that's a synchronization issue. Here's another one. You play pretty well, right? You're playing scales and you're playing a phrase and it works pretty well. You go to play that same scale or that same phrase and you get a different result. Maybe there's an error in it somewhere. And you play it again and there's another error, but it's in a different spot. That's definitely a synchronization issue. Before we get started, I'd like to ask for your support. If you're enjoying this channel, you like the style with which I teach, you like the content I produce, maybe you want to get a little bit deeper or just show your support, Patreon is the way to go. It's through Patreon you can access tabs for every lesson on this channel, but you can also gain access to my teaching platform called The Studio, and it's inside The Studio where I'm interacting with guitar players all the time. I host live QA sessions. I teach live deep dive courses on subjects like the pentatonic scale, triads, the major scale, the major scale modes. So if you're enjoying the channel, you'd like to show your support, or you actually want to study with me, Patreon's the way in. And if you do decide to support the channel, I thank you in advance. So solving this synchronization issue is really about refocusing on our picking hand. When I get students to come to me with these types of problems, I often give them a very simple exercise, which is play the pentatonic scale, but only look at your picking hand. You should try this. If indeed, when you focus on your picking hand, if your fretting hand sort of falls apart, you know that you haven't focused enough on your picking hand, right? So let's zoom in. I'm going to give you a couple of very, very simple exercises just to start shifting our focus to our picking hand and making sure that our synchronization is up to speed. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, synchronization. Synchronizing our picking and fretting hand at the same time. What we're going to be working on here is core techniques to be able to synchronize. There are a lot of different picking styles. There's sweep picking. There's efficiency picking. There's alternate picking. There's all kinds of stuff. We're not going to explore all that. We're just going to learn how to build the core technique of being able to synchronize. Initially, we're going to use alternate picking. This is basically picking up and down, right? And alternating between those two. And we're going to be using some very simple sort of shapes and of just a few notes on this hand, just to get ourselves the cognitive sort of success of synchronization. So I'm going to put three notes on the neck here. This is basically fifth fret, 7th fret and 8th fret on the E string. Now, there are three events happening here, right? Three different notes. And there are two events happening here, downstrokes or upstrokes. I'm just going to play these three notes in sequence multiple times. That's the exercise. Seems really simple, right? Seems almost comically simple. But let me show you what's happening. Since we have an odd number here and an even number of events here. When we play the sequence the first time, let's say we start with a downstroke. It's down, up, down. The very next time we start the sequence, it's up, down, up. What we're doing here is training our hands to start and end phrases either on an upstroke or a downstroke. Down, up, down, up, down, up, right? Now, if I had two notes down here, it would never change, right? 
but when you put three here and, and you have two solutions here, you get that down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. We're building our capability to have our hands be ready for an instance where they either need to start a phrase on a downstroke or start a phrase on an upstroke. Nothing else really matters. We're just building core capability. However, I'm not going to only be playing on one string. I'm going to need to change strings. Whenever you play scales, you have notes on multiple strings, right? Now, that may seem a little bit like, well, do I have to solve for every single instance? And the answer is no. I like to really boil things down to like the smallest possible problem. And it turns out when you're playing a note on one string and moving to a note on the other string using alternate picking, there are only two solutions to that problem. There are only two solutions that we need to build. And let me show you how that works. I'm going to put a note here on the D string, fourth fret, and on the G string, seventh fret. So let's just say I'm changing from this note to this note. It doesn't really matter. This is going to work on changing from any string to any other string. That doesn't really matter, but watch what happens. If I'm using alternate picking and I'm going from this note to this note and I start with a downstroke, this note has to be an upstroke. When I use that technique, this is called outside picking. And it's called outside picking because my pick is never on the inside of the two strings. I'm picking the notes from the outside of the two strings. Since I'm only using alternate picking, if I start this sequence with an upstroke, this is my second solution. This is called inside picking. My pick is always on the inside of the two strings. Outside picking inside picking. Those are really the only two solutions that we have to, to sort of build in for alternate picking when we change strings. Now this might be a little sort of boring. So what we're going to do here is alternate between this note on the D string and we're going to put three notes here on the G string. two reasons. One, it's boring if we just have the two notes, but number two, we want to start building some synchronization tasks for this hand as well. And we're going to do that exercise with outside picking. And inside picking. Now, you can put the three notes on the low string. You can do all kinds of different variations down here if you want to build some capability. But if you're just having a hard time just getting the inside and the outside picking done, you want to keep this hand as stable as possible to reduce your cognitive load. So you can just concentrate on outside picking and inside picking. Classically, inside picking is a little more difficult to sort of get our heads around and get our hands programmed to, but you're going to need both solutions. You may find yourself, your hands may find themselves in a situation where your upstroke is starting that transition and you're going to need that inside picking solution. Now, I want to show you one more thing and that is sometimes, specifically with arpeggios and, and very much so when you only have one note per string which chords are often sort of built with one note per string, you are going to need what's called a rest stroke. And rest strokes are basically playing across strings in one direction. So I'm going to just take an A major triad here. This is on the D, G, and B strings. It's seven, six, five, right? And I'm going to just use what's called rest strokes. This also builds into a technique called sweep picking, where you're just using one stroke, one direction to play all three notes as you're ascending, right? Going from low to high. And then when you're descending, going from high to low, you're using the opposite direction. So watch this. I'm just going in one direction. When I'm ascending, coming down from the top, I'm just going to reverse, <clears throat> I'm just going to reverse that. builds into sweep picking, right? But this builds your capability of being able to 
move across strings in the same direction. And when you're sequencing scales or playing arpeggios specifically, you run into instances where you need this. Watch this sequence. I'm using alternate picking as well as rest strokes. Right? So I'm going to need all of these techniques. You can, you know, if you want to do some variation down here, sort of increase your challenge, play this through multiple triads like this. Whenever I'm ascending, going from low notes to high, I'm always using that downstroke. When I'm descending, going from high notes to low notes, Always using that upstroke. Right? These few exercises build core capability and they solve micro problems that your hands will or are already trying to solve by themselves. But just taking the time to build some core synchronization capability, the capability to see, understand, and reprogram how you play, will generate massive massive returns on just your core capability to pick articulately, efficiently, and quickly. Okay, this isn't rocket science. Just a couple of very, very simple exercises to make sure that we can synchronize our two hands. And again, it's not necessarily about advanced techniques. This is about building the core awareness of how your hands actually work and giving your hands solutions to problems that they are definitely going to run into right? And setting them up for success in this way allows those solutions to sort of come and emerge naturally, very genuinely inside your playing if you just build them first. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found it helpful. Above all else, stay curious and I'll see you next time. Wow.